A 22-year-old cancer sufferer was told she was not eligible for disability benefit because she was not sick enough. Paige Garrett, from Flintshire, North Wales, was devastated to be diagnosed with stage 4 Hodgkin's lymphoma, which had spread to her lungs and lymph nodes. It had taken her 10 months to be given the diagnosis after she was initially told she had a chest infection and eczema. But Page was left in tears after being told she was not deemed sick enough for financial assistance after a home assessment which was done while she was having treatment. She had been advised that she would be entitled to a personal independence payment, PEP, which would help her with the extra costs of living with a condition. Each week, she would get either £57.30 or £85.60 for daily living and either £22.65 or £59.75 for mobility, which would help with her needing to travel to hospital three times a week. When the assessment was carried out, Paige says she could barely lift her head up off the sofa. But the letter declared she was physically well enough to take care of herself and that her mental health was fine, even though she had not been questioned about it. Paige told the news, I cried, I felt like I'd been personally judged. It made me feel like a fraud, like it was my fault that I was ill. The report said I wasn't lethargic when I couldn't lift my head off the sofa to speak to her, it felt so heavy. It also said my mental health didn't seem affected when I wasn't even asked how I felt. Of course I'm affected by having stage 4 cancer. She didn't listen to me at all. I was asked to stand on one leg, which I could do. What does that prove, I still have cancer? It's ridiculous that they even wanted to see me to check my claim. Why isn't my GP's letter that I had cancer and was having chemotherapy proof enough? Thankfully, with the help of a social worker, Paige was able to successfully appeal the decision and was awarded PIP in May, seven months after her first diagnosis. Even better, she has since finished chemo and a scan done in March has shown she is now cancer-free. But she said the experience of PIP was dehumanizing. A spokesperson for the Department of Work and Pension said, we are committed to supporting people with disabilities and health conditions. We support 1.88 million people through PIP and 1.97 million people through DLA. We have never spent more on benefits for disabled people and people with long-term health conditions, toddling over £50 billion a year, up £7 billion since 2010. Under PIP, 30% of claimants receive the highest rate of support, compared with 15% under DLA. But we constantly seek to improve the quality of PIP assessments. We have commissioned two independent reviews of PIP and most recently announced that we will pilot video recording of assessments, improving confidence in the assessment process.